As one of China's staple foods, the repeated incidents of toxic rice has been a cause of concern for many. On April 26 of 2020, a report on the disposal of 99.4 tons of cadmium poisoned rice in Jinxiong County, Yunnan Province, caused widespread concern. A video was recorded by an unknown individual on the situation. In the video, we see piles of rice bags being crushed and mixed with coal using heavy machinery. According to official media, the coal-covered rice was then burned as fuel in a thermal power plant and eliminated, citing the safety concerns of high cadmium levels in the contaminated rice. Between April and July of 2019, the Jinxiong County Market Bureau had previously confiscated the contaminated rice, which had been recently purchased by local food processing plants for rice noodles. Mr. Xiong, an official of the bureau, commented that during the 2019 Chinese New Year festival, they had sampled rice noodles manufactured by a local factory and found cadmium levels that exceeded safety standards. Looking further into the situation, they had finally identified the rice grains as the source behind the high cadmium concentrations. According to Mr. Xiong, neither the rice distributor nor the factory's company was aware of the dangerous cadmium levels in the rice. After the investigation, they found that the contaminated rice was purchased from seven different rice mills, who were later all filed for investigation. Cadmium, a heavy metal, is easily absorbed by rice crops and gets concentrated in the grains. While naturally present in minute quantities in soil, industrial discharge and some fertilizers can leach high levels of cadmium into the soil, which gets further absorbed into crops. To make matters worse, When contaminated foods like rice gets consumed by people, cadmium doesn't leave the body and instead accumulates in their bones and organs, leading to cadmium poisoning. At high levels, this can cause further issues such as kidney failure, anemia, and osteoporosis. Cadmium-contaminated rice has been repeatedly reported all over China. In 2017, a company in Yiyang sold over 1,440 tons of rice with dangerous levels of cadmium. When people found out, there was widespread outrage, leading to the sentencing of 16 individuals. In another example, Guangzhou's Nanfang Daily published a 2013 report on Hunan's toxic rice. In 2009, the Shenzhen Food Group purchased more than 10,000 tons of rice from the Hunan Province, which was then inspected by the Shenzhen Quality Department, who determined it to be unsafe for consumption. However, as rice prices increased, the Shenzhen Food Group ended up selling it to the public regardless, endangering the health of countless consumers. Back in 2007, Professor Pan Gunxing and his team at the Nanjing Agricultural University conducted a study to examine levels of heavy metals in rice. They had randomly purchased 91 unique rice samples from six different regions across China. When tested, it was found that a tenth of the samples surpassed consumable levels of cadmium in the rice. In another test conducted by the Quality Center for Rice and Food Products of the Ministry of Agriculture in 2002. The results from rice samples purchased off the national market also showed concerning results. 28.4% of the samples exceeded safe levels of lead, and also found that over 10.3% of them contained unsafe levels of cadmium. Pan Gengxing explains that the reasons for the high levels of cadmium can be attributed to the polluted soil. Runoffs and sewage from local mines and chemical plants can soak into nearby farmland. And as the cadmium is rather dense, the heavy metal tends to stay in the soil and will affect the crops even after years. In January of 2021, a new report in China had given the populace a clearer understanding of the repeated sale of contaminated rice. Like many other sinister situations, the primary motive is economic interest. Disguised as a grain distributor, a Chinese reporter went to a rice vendor in Duoyang, Sichuan, and asked to buy cheap rice. The vendor then offered to sell him a batch of cadmium-contaminated rice at a lower price. The rice was packaged differently and was non-refundable. After buying 100 kilograms of said contaminated rice through the guidance of the vendor, the reporter brought the rice to two third-party testing facilities to check for heavy metals. The tests showed that one of the samples contained 0.26 milligrams per kilogram of cadmium. While the other sample contained 0.38 milligrams per kilogram, which both exceeded the national limit of 0.2 milligrams per kilogram 
by around 30% and 90% respectively. According to informed sources, in the past two years, cadmium levels in doyang rice often exceeded national standards but would never exceed 0.4 mg per kilogram. From this reporter's investigation, we can see that the selling of contaminated rice was neither accidental nor uncommon. The reporter tried the same thing with a vendor named Zhang Feng in Yibin, a location 300 kilometers away from Deyang, and asked to buy 500 tons of cadmium poison rice. The vendor then agreed as if nothing was wrong at all. In fact, he even mentioned that dozens of tons of toxic rice are shipped every single day. Due to the high price of rice, the contaminated batches of rice, which are often sold below market prices, have become quite highly thought after despite the clear health hazards. The low prices are made even greater as the supply of contaminated rice still exceeds demand for it. It isn't just the people within the rice industry that are profiting off of contaminated rice. They have also found that even state-owned grain banks are in on this and are immorally cutting costs by purchasing unsafe rice. The thing with Deyang is that, on the provincial level, as long as cadmium levels do not exceed 0.4 mg per kilogram, it is not illegal for distilleries to acquire it. As such, many illegal grain merchants take advantage of this by purchasing the rice from state-owned grain banks under the name of a distillery and then proceed to sell it on the open market. According to a winery employee in Deyang, the distilleries are not doing this for free. Instead, they receive a 100 yuan per ton of rice as a convenience fee from the merchant. When asked about the illegal rice trade, an owner of a local state-owned grain bank stated that state-owned grain banks will properly dispose of any bags of rice they receive that exceed cadmium standards. However, the market is free to trade and is not within our control. The reporter then proceeded to interview grain vendors and farmers about the issue. Apparently, no professional testing was actually conducted by regulatory officials. Jia Xueyi even stated that, at most, the supervision departments will only conduct occasional inspections and will give nothing more than a fine for rice that does not meet safety standards, allowing the vendors to continue selling the rice. While all of this is extremely problematic, many people acknowledge that the issue in itself is much deeper than just the surface-level corruption that is allowing the continued sale of contaminated rice. To many, the main issue lies within the Deyang soil. In April of 2014, the Chinese Ministry of Environmental Protection and the Ministry of Land Resources released the National Soil Pollution Report. In this report, 6.3 million square kilometers was tested from 2005 to 2013. In it, it was found that many areas have experienced heavy soil contamination, especially in arable areas, which have primarily been caused by nearby mining and agricultural industries. On average, the total contamination in the soil exceeded the standard limit by 16.1%. However, this included all forms of soil pollutants, including inorganic, organic, and complex contaminants. When looking at inorganic contaminants like heavy metals, it was found that the level of these inorganic contaminants exceeded national limits by about 82.8%. In arable land, the rates were lower, but nonetheless concerning, at levels 19.4% higher than national limits, with the main pollutants being heavy metals, DDT, and PAH. Among them, cadmium and nickel pollutants exceeded the national standards by 7% and 4.8% respectively. When looking at soil sites in and around 690 different industrial sites, it was found that over 36.3% of the 5,646 soil sites had exceeded safety standards, mainly from metallic, chemical, and fossil fuel byproducts. According to the data published by the Institute of Geoscience of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, over 300,000 hectares of farmland in the year 2000 had exceeded safe heavy metal standards by an average of 12.1%. In the same year, it was found that there were a total of 891 pollution incidents that had contaminated 40,000 hectares of farmland, resulting in an estimated economic loss of 220 million US dollars. The annual use of pesticides in China was also around 230 million kilograms, of which 70% were highly toxic organophosphorus pesticides. 
In 2015, the Chinese Geological Survey Bureau of the Ministry of Land Resources also released a report on China's arable land, which showed that the proportion of areas that contained excessive heavy metals accounted for around 8.2 percent of the examined 924,000 square kilometers of area, around 68 percent of China's total arable land. Chinese soil pollution researcher Dang Yongfu. Pointed out the difficulties that arose through the attempts at prohibiting the sales of cadmium-contaminated rice. First, the prevention and control of soil pollution has yet to attract much attention from local governments, as many still understand very little and are too focused on other political activities and large-scale construction projects to care about environmental protection. Second, there is not enough of a profit incentive for local governments to act. Compared to flashier infrastructure projects like the construction of new roads and bridges, third, as the information regarding soil pollution has not been transparent, most local governments are also uninformed on the details of soil treatment, and are thus charged unreasonably high amounts for pollution treatment. For example, a piece of land that would have cost a few thousand yuan to treat will be charged at prices of up to twenty thousand to sixty thousand yuan. Lack of knowledge also means that very few people actually know how to use the newly developed technologies and products to treat polluted land. Also, some companies who do not have their own waste treatment systems but have support from local officials will take all the available technology and exclude other companies from using them, which not only further increases the cost of pollution management, but also interferes with the development of new technologies for soil pollution control.